you speaking on mentality how big is that uh, just in fighting in general it's like, everything. Is everything it's everything you can have a shotgun and I can have a BB gun if you scared like a little bitch I'm gonna come up and shoot you in your face with my shot with my BB gun if you don't pull the trigger from your shotgun that's a mentality <laughs> hey man you gotta go? Yeah, I gotta go. Alright. Shout out to Sino Sports. I appreciate you guys for coming through, watching BK Even May Team Relentless. We the realists. Mm -hmm. We all we got, we all we need. Of course. Alright, right, appreciate you guys. Yeah, yes. Anytime you need another interview, I got more. Come on, bro. I got something for him. You walk out, so I yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, though. Joey Angelo. Yep, yep, too. MMA fight a boxer, kickbox, and bring up a boxer. Talk to me, man. Say something. Introduce yourself. Ooh. First day back in a while. <laughs> been, with, been with Coach Dewey since I was what? Yeah. Shit, 15? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. been a long time. Yeah. Big, big on uh, win streak in MMA. Yeah. Two fight win streak in bare knuckle. Yeah. Only place to train. That's no, still working. That's it. Dewey Cooper is the best in the business. That part, that part. Not just coaching. It motivates you. Before you go out to a fight, it makes you feel like you can run through brick walls. Mm. And we intend to. How big is that? Oh, huge. Here. Talk to me, man. What's good, bro? See now. Nice to meet you. Yeah, definitely. Hey, What's up, baby? How you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My guy, see now, bro. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. What's up, bro? See now. Nice to meet you. What's your name? See now. See how you know. What's up? I'm Irv, man. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. We out here, Earl. Let's go, baby. Let's, oh. let's get it. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it. What's up, man? I'm Irv, by the way. Nice to meet you, Louis. Louis nice, nice to meet, to meet you, man. How y'all doing? Yeah, we're doing real good. Right, Shit, we clocked in. What you? Shit, we chilling. Shit, man. Talk we just got me. done Got done putting in this work. Uh, we do this every day, man. We clocked in every day. Um, I was in fight camp. Just got pushed back to March 27th. Um, we grinding every single day. Every single day is a grind. Um, whether it's uh, striking, uh, with Dewey wrestling with Bubba, uh, we getting it in two to three hours every single day. I go home, I rest, and I go back and do it again in the afternoon. And I grab a tenth planet. Um, and this is an everyday grind, it's everyday persistence. So you know, I quit my job to do this. Um, I'm hustling full time. I got my own clothing line. Um, I'm manufacturing other people's clothes. So uh, you know, a big lesson that I give to y'all motherfuckers is if you got a dream, you got to chase that junk. You know, it's gonna be ups and downs. It's gonna be hard days, it's gonna be bright days. You can see it's cloudy as shit outside, but you can't let that cloudy shit uh, uh, put a damper on your day. You gotta stay positive, you gotta stay grinding, stay persistent, whether you're YouTubing, blogging, personal training, selling makeup, whatever. Whatever you're doing, you gotta keep grinding, you gotta keep pushing, and uh, yeah, man. <laughs> stay How'd, you man. Stay How'd you get into fighting? Uh, man, I got into fighting, uh, really, just, I wasn't, per se like a bad kid, but it's just running around the neighborhood, okay. getting into scraps so with a lot of people. So where you're like, I'm pretty good at this, I might be able to parlay this into a living. So uh, I ended up doing some time, I got out in 2017. Mm -hmm. I did about like uh, two and a half to three years. After I was kind of, you know, I was a two-time felon, so I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. This is a young kid. Yeah, young kid, so I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my life. They weren't hiring a lot of felons, um, and if they were, they're, I'm not gonna work at McDonald's for no. $7.50, What does it say? What you got? What, what does it say? Don't, Don't tell, tell me, show me. me. Oh, no, that's our slogan. I love it. Let me, let me go ahead and rock that. Yeah. Yo, that. Come on, oh. man. You talking what we like. Oh. You living what we living. Don't sing it. Bring that shit. Oh, yeah. you see me? That part. That part. We out. Good looking, baby. Yes, sir, huh? Throughout the negativities of the negative people around me, the streets, the people that aren't really there for you, but aren't, they're only there for you when it's convenient to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, for the bullshit. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Let's go to the people, club, let's drink, let's do all exactly. that wild shit. Exactly, people that, people that only, 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 you only benefit their life when it's convenient to them. So I, gotta, I had to cut them people out and, uh, you know, re really uh, put, surround myself around positive, like-minded people that are doing the same shit that I want to do, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whether they're vetted pros uh, or upcoming amateurs or some of the pros uh, best prospects. Uh, I'm just trying to surround myself around, with, with people that they so do what they're like doing. So that's the hardest part of a lot of people's lives is how did you separate yourself from the negativity and get you make sure you stayed with positive people? Oh man, uh, I literally had to just isolate myself from everyone. So, you know, I got a lot of, you know, I got friends in the streets just making 20K a week you know, dealing, I got friends doing this and the clubs, rapping this on the third. Um, the easiest thing for me was, was just to isolate myself and, and really write down my plans and goals and what I wanted to achieve in life. Um, 
and then hone in on that. You know what I'm saying? It takes 30 days to make a, or what's the saying? It takes 30 days to make something a habit and 90 days to make it, you know, a lifestyle. So uh, that's what I've been really running with. And if you if you stay around a positive people, um, the negative the negative batteries ain't gonna drain drain your positive energy. That's how I kind of kept it. I isolated myself. So I put myself back into mentality that I was locked up. I'm gonna isolate myself from the people that's gonna possibly put me back to places where I don't want to go, and two, just gonna knock me and my family back ten spots. You know what I'm saying? So, isolate, mm -hmm. isolate. Man. And so, who are some of the people that inspired you, or that you were reading, or watching their interviews and stuff while you were going through that? Because I know that was probably one of the toughest parts of the process, right? Uh, it was. Um, it wasn't per se anyone. Uh, specifically, it was just more the accumulation of knowledge that I was getting. Mm -hmm. So um, I was young. I, I was talking more than I was listening. Right. And I got to the point where, at some at some day, you just realize, all right, I need to soak up all this energy. All the OGs talking. I would see OGs violate, come back on on violation on probation. And, oh, I do this. I got this. So it's just really taking advice from you, 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 and making it conform to my situation mm -hmm. um, and yeah man you don't really get a second uh, opportunity at second chances so when I got out I started doing it the right way mm -hmm. everything 150 percent so you became a student basically like some of these people I'm either gonna use what you're doing or discard it exactly or... so how did you get with Dewey so I got with Dewey so the funny thing was with Dewey is when I first moved out to Vegas I was an amateur I had uh, it was two and I was an amateur uh, two first round knockouts. I slid in his DMs. I was like, hey, look, man, when you're one of the best coaches out here, I want to work with you. Y'all got a good team atmosphere going. Um, he was like, look, I only work with pros and high level amateurs. I was like, cool. I put that in the shelf. So in, in, in my head, and I was like, all right, that's my goal. That's the coach that I want to okay. get to. So, you know, I bounced around, you know, I put the time in at Extreme. I put the time in at all these other gyms um, to where I worked my way up for him to be you know, t for him to be able to be like, okay, I've seen you around the gym. Mm -hmm. I've seen you at these amateur fights. I got two titles as an amateur. So I built up my credentials to be able to mess with someone uh, as a high level striking right. caliber coach like Dewey, you know what I'm saying? So it's really just putting in that work. And my mindset is, you know, I, I either think about it like street mentality or video game mentality. Um, no one's gonna fuck with you if you ain't putting in the time in on the street, or no one's gonna fuck with you um, if you just, you know, just hop in the game and you haven't been mm -hmm. been around. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, ah. um, so it's really just staying consistent and staying persistent with this game and and showing them I'm locked in every day. You know, mm -hmm. I'm here on time. You tell me I gotta be somewhere. I'm near. Is just keep it man being a man of your word and, and honestly, like you know, separating the. I'm really here. I made a lot of sacrifices mm -hmm. to, to where I'm at today. You know, I got two kids. My, my daughter's birthday yesterday, I didn't get to see happy her. Happy birthday. Huh? Happy, happy yeah. birthday to Kira, but you know, I made sacrifices. I wasn't able to see her, but I went to the gym four times. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I made the sacrifice, because I know later on, three, four, five years from now, I'll be able to tell her, like, I made these sacrifices when you were younger for what we have now mm -hmm. and what I'm building. So. You know, it's just being real with yourself and, and understanding that this is this is a game where you don't get the satisfaction right then and there. You know, you get right. it in two, three, four years. Mm -hmm. You look at all these, you know, UFC UFC champions and high level caliber guys, Dustin Poirier. You know what I'm saying? Justin Gaethje, all these guys that have been in the game for a long time, they've been fighting for five, six, seven years, consistent, consistent. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to build that repetition, build that pathway. Um, stay consistent. I'm only 26 years old, so it's gonna be. Alright, guys, gonna be, limit them, man. Yeah, man, it's gonna be a lot of pain so for a lot know, of motherfuckers out here. It's the little things, really, that build. Get into the big things, though, right? Yes, Make sir. sure them little things start adding up, and then you said habit stacking, and next thing you know, you already have this aspect out over here. So, what do you like about training here with Dewey? Uh, I like the structure, man. I like the structure. I like the gritness. I like being. I like just the realness of it. Um, I like that he gets on you when you're not working hard. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's just a lot of other coaches, especially when we're at that level of where like my money is the coach's money. Mm -hmm. um, some coaches will let you slack because at the end of the day, they're getting 10%, 15, 20% of what the fuck you're making. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
so they're not they're not gonna hold you to the highest of you. Right. Um, and some 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 people are gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna give it ninety percent, and their coach is gonna let them go ninety percent. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm sacrificing a lot, so I'm going a hundred, and I want you to tell me if I'm if I'm if I'm it's slacking. So, right? I don't I don't want you to fucking be polite where this isn't you know this isn't youth soccer it's real and fun, life fun, yeah this is real life someone's in the cage trying to fucking take my head off like i'm trying to take their fucking head off and i need you to be real if i'm fucking slacking you need to tell me the fuck i'm slacking mm -hmm. don't tell me you know it's i just like i just like the realness of the sport and that's why i do it you know what i'm saying i don't i don't, I don't play football i don't play basketball i fight i like to punch people in the face simple as that there's nothing wrong with that that's yep. cool man yeah, that's it. we've been Social doing it for a long time anything. I got social media, uh, uh, Instagram, the Black Zillion, uh, Facebook, Luis Conde Navarro, uh, no Twitter, uh, and that's about it, clothing man. Clothing line, what's the clothing line? Clothing line is called Combat Kings. Uh, uh, you see it right here. So we got the simulated murder line out right here. Combat Kings online. And then we got Kings Print Apparel. So uh, if you're a local fighter, small business owner, anything like that, um, instead of you going out to a print shop and getting bulk orders of a shirt that you want to sell, I will pre-make it for you so you can pre-order it and I will be your fulfillment center. I will uh, design the shirt for you, I'll tack it up, I'll put it up on my website or I'll make a website for you so you get your pre-order sales. That way it cuts the middleman in half. You don't have to go to these wholesale dealers where you got to do a minimum order of 12 to 24 shirts, pay for it up front and you might not be able to sell all of them. So I'm cutting, I'm cutting them out, you come straight to me. We'll figure out a place where you can get a shirt made between $10 and $20. You can pre-sell it. That way, you know, you're not going out of pocket on some costs. You get more money in your pocket. I'm helping the community out. We make some money and, and that's it. So yeah, I'm just trying to help the community and, and hustle. That's it. Mm -hmm. that part. I like it. Love it, man. Love I love it. that. I make this merch when I'm wearing Boom. You, you know what I'm saying? What? Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little busy. Yes, sir. I got I got I got a industrial vinyl press in my in my crib. So anything you want to do, <laughs> heat press and bang it out. So man, we just hustling out here, man. That's it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Space, four days of work, four days off. Mm -hmm. Um four days on, four days off. So I actually walked into a Muay Thai school, joined the school, got the paperwork, forged it myself. <laughs> and trained for almost a year before my parents even knew I was training. Wow. So I never really told that story, but uh, yeah, that's how I got involved in it. And uh, I've been involved with Muay Thai and some form of martial arts ever since. Wow, so you've been in the game for a long time now. Yeah, since the 80s, man. What is one of the ways that's helped you sustain training? Because obviously it's gotta be a lifestyle at this point. Yes, yes, well, I think, I think we're all born with a certain soul. Our wow. spirit changes as we evolve in our environment and the things that affect us negatively, positively, adversely, blah, blah, blah. But I think we all we all have a certain soul. Way before martial arts as a kid, I was always the kid in the sandbox fighting somebody, go to the grocery store, get in a fight with a kid my mm -hmm. age. I was just always very competitive and very aggressive as a kid. Um, so I needed an outlet like that. Wow, okay. And I, by the way, trying to be like my older brothers. My brother Paul was knocking people out on the streets <laughs> weekly. So I was seeing all these all these social things that were coming into me at a young age so fighting was never like a major thing it was just something you did mm -hmm. someone disrespected you someone got slick you punched the shit out of them mm -hmm. uh, so i was a fighter before i was a martial artist martial arts helped me become a better fighter mm. uh and and it's different for most people but i, I just i just really feel i was born to compete in some magnitude mm. physically and what, what's better than fighting, man? Fighting is the end all, prove all. Mm -hmm. If you can whip my ass, you get the final say. Exactly. <laughs> Vice versa. Uh -huh. You win, you make the rules now. <laughs> you know, we come to a disagreement, hopefully we can be civilized and hash it out. But if not, you know, sometimes you gotta go knuckle up. Uh -huh. and don't hit before I say hit. Don't hit after I say hit. Hit when I say hit. You the fucking fight, and we say right hand. Prepare yourself to do what you hear your coach saying. This is practice for the fight. I'm saying hit, and y'all ain't hit. I'm saying hit, and y'all ready to hit. Wait till you hear that indication. In the fight, we say, level up, boom. If you practice it, you just let it throw it. Watch the train, Devin Haney. I loved him out of everybody. Why? Because whatever the fuck you said, he would do it right there. Didn't he, David? He's a world champion now. 
youngest dude in boxing champion, but he was like a video game. Whatever you say, he was doing right then. We used to be on the sidelines laughing. One, two, three, he would do it. Uppercut, he'd do it. Left hook, he'd do it. Because he was tuned into his coach's voice. Let's get tuned in. Other guy back in the chat again. On my call. Guys, come on. Way to go, Bruxton. Way to go, Jules. Way to go, Killer G. Twilight Timmy. Papa motherfucking Jenkins. Miracle Mitchell. Collie. Collie Former. Joe Angelo. Let's go. Nico, let's go. That's my guy.